Hey there, welcome to this fully narrated real-time tutorial where I'm gonna draw this illustration that you see here of this warrior girl. This is gonna be a laid back session where I share my process and show you how I create an illustration like this in real time, unedited, fully narrated, my thought process. Let's get started. All right, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional artist for 20 years and a professional drawing teacher for 10 years. I'm here to help you draw cool stuff from your imagination, to embrace the challenge of drawing, and to master the craft of line and color illustration. Now, as I said, this is gonna be a real-time fully narrated tutorial. I'm showing you a bit of sped up stuff here while I do the intro. If this type of illustration, the line and color, the comic book, manga, uh, bon dessiné, comic book style of illustration is something that you're interested in, go check out my quick start guide, especially if you're sort of not quite sure where to start and how to build this type of process that I'm showing you here. In this tutorial, I'm just going through it and showing you how I actually create stuff. Okay, it's not always the cleanest, it's not always the best and most well explained, but it really does share with you how I do it. If you want the, the simple tutorial, go check out my quick start guide. That'll show you exactly what I suggest you do to get up and running with a line and color process. All right, let's jump into this tutorial. All right, let's draw some fantasy stuff. Now I've got a thumbnail that is something I did in my sketchbook. And what I've done is I've taken a late night bad photo of it with my cell phone, which uh, anyone can do. So we don't have a good quality scan. We, we can't use that in any way, shape or form, but that doesn't matter because I think it's always important to separate out that process anyway and make sure that whatever the thumbnail is, whatever medium we do it in that the rest of the process sort of isn't reliant on this thumbnail being anything in particular. And this is a perfectly good example why that's a great idea. Because it means I don't have to make sure that that is a, you know, an amazing um, scan or an amazing representation of anything. It can just be what it is. So I'm working on a um, sort of 4,000 ish by 4000 ish pixel canvas and just basically gonna work up a very simple illustration here it's gonna be a warrior fantasy girl with a giant sword spear thing some long hair and some kind of flying creatures in the background based on a, a typical kind of heroic pose Fred Zeta style pinup. So let's jump in and see how we go. I'm going to reduce the opacity of this thumbnail way down because I don't really need it to be anything in particular. I'm going to get a pencil and this is just a chalk brush. This will be included in the line and color quick start guide as one of the brushes. Um, this is, you know, one of the main brushes I use. And what I'm going to do is just go through and basically sort of see if I can construct a figure that matches roughly what I had um, in that little sketch. And probably what I'm going to do is just, um, again, we'll, we'll see how we go in terms of whether or not I need to just whether I'll just sort of work up that sketch that we've got there or whether I'll kind of add um, another layer and create finish lines on top of it we'll see uh, but I am going to step up that pencil just so it's a little bit larger so again just blocking out head size Now this hip feels like that's kind of going this way. We should probably make this one go 
the other way, but again, it doesn't have to to get our sort of contraposto pose. We don't have to go crazy. We just have to make this one tilted up a little bit. But again, if we're going to keep the head there, let's add some dimensionality to the face. Again, I'm not trying to break any boundaries here in terms of drawing or originality. This is very much me working within my comfort zone. Just trying to create something. I'm going to try as much as I can to make it sort of interesting from a color composition standpoint. That's kind of what I'm thinking of working towards. separate layer and again the idea is going to be to get rid of that uh, this sort of one as soon as possible all right gonna try and figure out again go shoulder shoulder there rib cage let that neck is quite long but Again, that isn't the worst thing. All right. So for rib cage, it's going to be ending there. We need to make the hips be pretty close to that. It's not going to, again, sort of rough in those hips. See if this rough idea here is going to work. So we can imagine we've got neck coming here, wrapping around the back of that rib cage. I'm putting these in a little bit just so I can show you what I'm doing. I might rough. I might go past those. You know, if I was sort of doing it. Again, elbow is going to be roughly in line with that bottom of the rib cage. So we'll just draw in our little stick figure there. Let's give it a bit of sort of bend that way. And the forearm can bend that way. So we're exaggerating that gesture of the arm. Again, just gives it a bit of sort of spring. across that proportion. So we've got shoulder, shoulder, elbow, elbow. Again, this elbow can be up a little bit. And then probably what's happening here is the, the hand is maybe dropping behind, which we'll see that that might be super awkward. That creates a lot of bad tangents. It also means we don't need to draw that thing which is always cool. Okay, so let's visualize again where those hip bones and things are going to be. Again, I don't normally draw in the skeleton, but it, it can be can be really useful. There we go. Um, we'll look at kind of exactly why later, right? But it does often help us get some of those kind of like curves in especially with the with the female figure I find it can be quite useful and um, again I'm just sort of doing all this and we'll do a check of it obviously when we mass it in it's going to be a little bit more like this knee there and we've got a foot here that foot is kind of getting lost. We can extend these out a bit. All right, so we can imagine if we were to sort of think about again where that knee, I'll zoom out. 
measure from here to here roughly. And I could just do that with my finger on top of the screen. So again, I feel like the foot is going to come sort of down there or, you know, maybe off the page. She has kind of like longer legs. So knee is going to be sort of somewhere here. So that means again, if we think about where that hand is going to be, again, this arm is kind of coming maybe at us a little bit. All right, so it's not maybe going to fall down to its full degree. This one, however, yeah, that, uh, that, that hand is sort of going to be behind there, gripping. Again, this giant spear thing. Gonna give it a little bit of curve. And again, I'm just blocking it in here. We'll be doing more passes on all of this. There we go. Some kind of earrings there. There we go. All right, so again, at this point, it's really good to step back. Um, I mean, before I step back, I might just quickly rough in this thumbnail or oh, the other sort of things we had as part of the thumbnail and uh, see if we can just get rid of it. That might help a bit too. I, I do want to have some sort of depth here, right? So it feels like this these rocks or whatever is sort of in when the foreground kind of want it to have a bit of sort of S shape not sure if I'm finding that there background there, hair, hair, no, my hair needs to be going, sort of still flowing that way, and again, like some sort of flying stingray type creature, just because that's sort of what I had in mind. Again, just roughing in. here a bit, but we'll do that in a bit. I've just got some vague background stuff here that we can think about later. All right, so yeah, if we sort of get rid of that, that gives us a pretty good idea. And this is a great time and opportunity to make a duplicate, something I always do. And I'm gonna drag this up above me to the monitor that is above me. And I'm just going to put it there so I can sort of check, check that overall proportion. I'm just going to leave it there. So this way, when I'm back down here, zoom in and out, I can sort of just check that proportion. Save that. And what we'll do is we'll flip it and just uh, work on the anatomy a little bit from this point. So again, I just feel like that might be, this leg is gonna sort of come at us a little bit. 
So again, a good thing I like to do that makes me more fearless is to duplicate that layer. So if I want to go back to that previous stage, I can, because that sort of represents a nice, like, point in time where we sort of crossed a line, right? I've sort of got this here. Now, this doesn't look like anything, right? And one of the most challenging things is that when you're trying to develop your own process for how exactly you go about this, it, it's really tricky to know. What I'd always say is like that, if you gave me someone else's painting and that person was like really, really good, there's points at that with that painting where maybe I could like grab it and run with it. And, you know, that would maybe allow me to, to create something that is better than what I could create, you know, because that person is so good at what they do. Um, but there's also probably, you know, a large portion of that person's process where if you ask me at any point in time what they're doing, I, I really would have no idea. I'd just be like, I have no idea where they're going with that. It looks terrible. Um, and this is one of those things where, to me, this is a really, really important stage. I've kind of drawn a bad little skeleton here. Um, and really all I'm doing is checking that proportion. Now the thing is I've been here so many times where I've tried to skip that step and not double check those proportions and not kind of play around at this stage and make sure that again this, right, this kind of weapon is gonna sort of roughly meet where I think the hand should be, all those things that this is important. I'm sort of like appreciating this stage even though to most people it's going to look like like nothing, right? Like sort of trash. Um, so yeah, let's have a go at seeing what else we can do. Just going to sort of roughly draw some stuff here. I'm not sure what what to do with this design. Trying to make it sort of geometric or, or brutal. figure out like what way right like which way is it coming is it this coming sort of at us or what is going on to figure that out here as well. Just thinking about that. Again, not 100% not sold on any of those things. All right, let's see if we can rough in the, the form here. So this is where, again, drawing through is a huge, huge part of the process here. Drawing through just means we draw stuff behind, right? I'm not always just concerned with the surface and what, you know, what, what we're going to see. I'm also drawing what's behind. I'm not going to finish the face yet because um, I'll deal with that too much because I may have to re, you know, move it around and 
feel like it's always good to sort of finish those things a little bit later. So just, again, blocking in some pretty rough Oh, she's not holding that. In fact, you won't even see this um, thing. It'll be, it'll be behind, right? sort of blocked in what's happening with this anatomy okay let's find that center that hair is going to be there have some other hair coming down find center now again where's horizon line again to me it's kind of like a little bit lower right So again, her torso is kind of facing this way, and then it's kind of like twisted a bit till it's kind of gonna face um, us over here. So again, we've got sort of the ribs are gonna be here, breasts are gonna be somewhere over here. that line over. Again, just mass that out over there. Again, we'll be looking up at that head. Let's reiterate that concept. Let's draw down. Again, if you read my uh, top five head mistakes that people tend to make in the beginning, um, it's a free guide you can get, free mini workshop, uh, thedrawingcritics.com forward slash fix your heads, I think. I'll put a link in the description anyway, uh, in addition to the quick start guide. Um, one of the things I mentioned there is that it's really important when we start this construction to draw that center line down. Now again, I've kind of roughed in the shape of that face um, already, and it kind of looks okay to me. But again, that is one of those things I check. I, I'm just like, let's drop that line, that center line there. All right, let's make sure we don't do anything silly, right? Because I want this, I don't want this chin to sort of like slip this way too much. But again, it's, I feel like that it, it's going to work okay because it's a bit sort of elfish and yeah, so I think it'll be okay. But again, that is something important to pay attention to. So there's my center line. That's dropped down, but obviously the mouth is going to be there. Right, muzzle of that mouth is going to be there. Let's draw that nose. Oh. That's no good. So, I always like to think of the nose. That the, the way I kind of think about it is I kind of draw the space that it sort of takes up on. Like if you imagine, you just have like a right, like a bowl, and and I kind of just draw like the space that the nose would sort of. If you imagine you cut it off and you could kind of just like what shape is it as it attaches 
and then I sort of construct the length of it like this. All right, so that's sort of creating the dimensionality, right? I create like the length of it, all right, by taking sort of center. Okay, if it was pointing down, it would be a bit like this. Getting drawing through there. If that makes sense. So yeah, I'm, what I'll do is I'll kind of, again, it's it feels like I'm drawing here, the, the indication line feels like I'm drawing the nose, but actually what I'm doing is I'm trying to map out the the space it takes up and then sort of think about how much of that well, the bottom do we see right so I'm sort of drawing again drawing that bottom of the nose Bump. like that again super rough but again that allows me to sort of position it and, and think about dimensionality eyes here and got that line there that line there get I'm gonna, gonna have to redraw that face once I've actually figured out what's going on but for now just kind of leave that in there and I'll flip it and check that stuff again. So we've got that center line again, center navel somewhere around there. Bottom of the pelvis somewhere there. And again, got that hip bone. So the, the trouble with like drawing through is half the time you can tell what someone's doing when they're trying to draw through and the other half of the time you can't really. Because it's hard to know like sort of which way, All right, like ellipses go. Like are we looking at the one side of it or the other side of it? So. Again, if we think about that pelvis all right, I can see the outside of the, the pelvic sort of structure there, and this one would be inside. And that gives me, again, this point here, and this point here, and you've got the hip bone here, hip bone here. some sort of belt thing and it's going to be basically right, wrapping around there actually let's draw that in a bit lighter because so I'm finding that line where the where the hips are because that's you know that's basically where we're going with a belt going sort of around the bone structure but we're going to be sort of going in a little bit there and then have some sort of fantasy loincloth thing dropping down. It's good to figure that out because again, we, we can get sort of drawing problems, you know, like some tricky things um, around the sort of the, the pelvic area where you kind of got to figure out a bunch of muscles that kind of connect. So if you can kind of cover it up and, you know, again, especially in an image like this where I'm not working on anatomy specifically, if I can get away with not doing that, not, you know, like really nutting that out and drawing 
100% through and figuring all that out, then I will take that. Mm, I might leave whatever that is till a bit later. Let's see if we can figure some of this stuff out. So here again, going to have the massing in a knee. Right, and here is like the sort of calf, and that's the sort of compression there. And again, a bit of squash and stretch as that kind of comes over. Now, I'm not looking at any reference for this, right? So it could, could easily be some like super simple things that I'm missing there in terms of how that actually plays out. We'll see. Again, I don't think that bottom calf is going to be quite that, maybe quite that sort of big. We'll see. Again, got the ball of the foot. Sorry, the heel of the foot. And here is the ball of the foot. Big toe, right? Box of toes. Put in some toes there. So yeah, probably that whole leg is like getting pretty, pretty big. And also probably like, you know, just getting a bit too sort of structural there. Again, this might be a thing where, you know, I'll sort of play around with it for a little bit. You know, if I get sort of too frustrated with it, I, I think it could well be um, a good candidate for, you know, checking some reference, seeing sort of what's happening there. Um, and it could just be that, you know, in general, right, we're just not going to see a lot of... not going to see a lot of that foot, right? Like, where exactly is that foot? I think we could do is, again, just think about where that foot is going to be. Because I think, again, the way I've got it, I need to maybe, again, draw through, construct heel of the foot. Again, we can always move that rock, right? That is not, not truly that important. So again, knee. And we've got, again, the bone there. And again, we're faced with that same problem of kind of like, what, what do we do with the anatomy? How much do we kind of like put in there? And again, there could be a bunch of ways to kind of solve that. I'm not, not quite sold on that whole thing, like exactly where that should be. Again, if, if we have, if we have reference for it, I don't want to get reference. I, I might go and look at like, oh, how does the calf and the um, thigh sort of compress based on different sort of anatomical sort of um, styles and um, you know how much muscles there and stuff um, or 
we could just kind of change it a little bit. All right, think about knee here. Again, sort of calf here. Just change that a bit. Hide it behind this sort of rock. Again, I'm going to come back to it. It's very easy to get sort of stuck on these things. It's the kind of thing where, yeah, you can kind of like, it's very easy to sort of hyper focus on it. Right, just spend heaps and heaps of time fussing around over, like, oh, you know, are we getting that anatomy right? And then you kind of zoom out and you're like, oh, it doesn't really matter because you know, it's not really the most important part of the image. zooming out and flipping and stuff. Again, and what I did want to do was make sure this Let's see if we can get this looking a little bit more interesting. there. Again, just trying to make it sort of clear that it's sort of coming into the page a little bit. Telling the depth story. Yeah, there's lots of types of stories in, in art. Some are kind of literal narrative stories. Some are more about, you know, telling the story of the, the environment. You know, again, the depth or the the atmosphere or other things like that. Again, um, there's lots of things we could kind of work on here. Um, let's have a go at have a go at these.
Again, trying to think about some sort of design we can add. Get some sort of little kind of mark there to kind of say this is the front. tricky, don't, don't want to play too much with this type of composition um, when it's flipped because often we can make decisions that again are not optimal for when we flip it back these guys are like, yeah, good example of something that's really good to do when it's flipped try and make those more interesting. Alright. I'm going to probably try and paint some clouds behind it. Let's do a save. Let's flip it and see what we got. That's okay, again, I'm going to duplicate that and we'll have another go at this. What I might do is again see if I can, I'll have another go at it and we'll see whether we can again find some sort of reference. So again, that foot is going to be there. In the, in the thumbnail, if we look at the, the thumbnail, it was really sort of front on. I wonder whether, again, just sort of doing that might be. Again, that's kind of what it was like. Again, to me, that was a part of the thumbnail that I thought was kind of interesting. But um, again, this is this is where stuff gets tricky, right? We got like ideas, things that we we thought were like you know a, an integral part of the the whole thing. Are they actually important? very difficult to tell sometimes. Right, so again, heel, ball, but
and again, there's always a danger with this kind of thing where, again, we sort of try and we try and sort of show too much. Like it, it, it becomes a battle with like, well, can I draw the anatomy or not? Can I, can I do it? Does it matter? No one will care. No one will care whether I show it or don't show it. But to a certain degree, I feel like often what can happen to us artists is we get hyper focused on the, the ego of that of that stuff. Like that, a rib cage might be a bit chunky. All right, let's think about again. I'll, I'll, I've got the other version there. I feel like that's closer to the thumbnail that I had, so I, I kind of want to kind of want to leave it there. Think about some things attached to that sort of belt. Maybe give some sort of little dagger or something. Could sort of put it there, maybe. Again, I like that sort of clean look there. Just trying to add a bit of visual complexity around the place. So just I'm probably adding more structure and like s drawing these breasts a little bit sort of um, yeah with a little bit too much sort of structure um, but again that sort of helps in the beginning you can always make them feel a bit natural later on think about wearing some kind of Again, just adding this from Visual Library. Just finding all that stuff structurally. Put some hair down here. We can mirror this shape in these earrings. Make them a little bit more interesting. Maybe link her to them in some way, shape, or form. few indications of where this arm is sort of going. Let's put in the 
shoulder back here. Put this here. Again, this is going to be tricky. But I think as long as we get these tangents, right? And tangent just means where the lines are meeting, right? These lines are sort of meeting. There we go. All right. I reckon we got to hustle at this point. I feel like some of that sort of stuff is working. Last question remaining is, what do we do with this silly design here that I've sort of got? Again, I feel like, and, and what do I do with that hand? Again, I feel like I could try and use some of this flying manta ray, fish, stingray sort of thing here. Maybe try and link that. Yeah. All right. here maybe if it was a bit more of a yeah, just trying to look for any old thing really that's kind of like a little bit more interesting than you know a uh, standard European medieval sword Something like that. about just exactly where all these guys go. Now it's not too late to kind of just generally again move things down, right? I could move things down a touch, give this a little bit, oh. all right, give this a little bit more room. Right, that a little bit more room. Hmm. All right, what are we going to do with this hand? thinking I think it's just something like that will be fine surely what could go wrong Alright, 
we can do all that in the next stage. All right, so again, quite a long construction drawing process. Hopefully it will come good, be worth it in the end, uh, in terms of effort, etc. Again, still not 100% sure about these rocks. So just trying to make it feel a bit less like, um, again, these are the only rocks like that in the scene. Because they're quite sort of angular. extra space let's make it clear we're not going to be sort of looking So yeah, again, um, good to do a double check, good to flip at this stage, right? Just check everything's kind of working okay. Right, back, forward. Let's see if stuff really looks sort of funky at this stage, you'll see it. Again, you know, that, that knee and stuff is not great. We'll see how it turns out. But yeah, on to the line work. Okay. So yeah, let's get it the right way around. And actually, again, just gonna make different technique for fading out the lines. Gonna make a white layer, reduce the opacity. Let's make another layer. And I think what I'm gonna do is make that pen, pencil size a little bit smaller. Actually, yeah, make it a little bit smaller. I made it 10. Oh, all that does is just depends on how big your canvas is. Um, but it's important to you know, not start with a, a, a sort of a, a pencil that's way too big or too small. I think this will be pretty good. Again, I have a version of this on the screen above that is going to help me keep that in check. Just thinking about what can I do here? What can I create? Let's start with stuff in the foreground when we're in doubt. And again, just stick with something kind of simple. Boom, boom. It's just sort of got like a bit of hair sort of trapped in like a little bit of a top knot. The rest of the hair is coming down there. Again, cheek is coming down here. Just soften that under the... I don't want to have too much of a strong... 
um, you know, what sort of like line there. Ear here. Sure, again, we're lining up all those things with the right anatomical markers. <clears throat> Side of the nose is where that sort of tear duct is going to begin. much more in terms of just what feels right with these eyes I'm not trying to you know add heaps of structure <clears throat> often it's easy you know you, you can read a lot of anatomy books and they love to talk about how you know the, the eye is kind of like this three-dimensional thing and you know it's like sort of comes out here and then you know you've got the thingy there and eyelashes here and stuff again depending on how realistic you want to go that's important um, and also in terms of you know trying to create different uh, different angles you know like how do we make it feel as if the the character we're looking up at the character or looking down at the character again you know one of, one of the most important easiest things you can do right is if you kind of you know draw an eye like that right versus like that all right, so if we sort of just, just basically if you have an eye where we see a lot of like the, the top of the eye, right, and the eyebrow, as opposed to kind of, all right, like this, all right, this is where we're going to be looking sort of up at the eye, this is where we're going to be looking sort of down. So often iconographic things like this that will be more indicative and if you kind of put those in it'll kind of key up the rest of the the image you know so it's less important to be 100 percent structural you you know as when you're working in a stylized line and color sort of look um it's just as important to understand the iconography of how people read facial expressions right are we looking up or down at someone right is someone looking down at you if they are looking down at you, then again, you sort of see, right, you see the top of the white of their eyelid, right? If uh, if someone's looking sort of up at you, you see basically the, the inversion. Eyebrow, eyebrow. Now, if you get that right, it'll kind of save a lot of other stuff that might look kind of rubbish. Um, and you can get it all structurally right, but if you don't get that sort of element of the expression right, then again, it kind of all, it all falls apart.
That's what I think, anyway. Let's get... Yeah, I'll probably, again, do another pass once I've gotten rid of all these sort of things. So should have drawn this thing while I was looking at this thing. Traps. More traps. It's got this sort of necklace. Let's move it a little bit over here. A bit more space. Again, good. I'm kind of good to not do too much tracing here, right? Good to like sort of zoom out, check everything, make sure that when we redraw these sort of finish lines that Actually paying attention to the right ones. So using a bit more indication here. Don't need to complete or draw all these sort of things of this coin bra thing. Do so again. This is kind of cheating in Photoshop. Just move this down a tiny bit so it kind of matches that. That way, I think I can get it to overlap the breast in a bit of a way that matches that other one.
probably a bit harsh on that hip. Smooth that out. So again, we can shade and add a bit of nuance to some of these. As we go, again, I might add some shadow. for rotation. under there All right, like that except we won't put that in quite as strongly over the top Again, I've sort of got the elbow there that's like pushed maybe a little bit far so let's see if we can smooth that out and again we'll just kind of indicate some structure there so you're not quite sure how to add some of that extra structure we've got just right might not be worth putting it in could be worth just kind of leaving it little things like this that your like sort of more solid underdrawing will allow you to do right if I sort of you know roughed in these it's gonna be a lot easier to kind of then make sure they're you know, drawn outside the silhouette of the arm um, you know as opposed to just sort of making it two-dimensional right the two-dimensional side of it I think is sort of fine for you know, concept art and, and other things where we're not paying heaps of attention, but it's nice to, at least, again, this is pretty quick, but it's nice to be able to try and give some dimension there.
So that is not a great hand. It's probably an okay hand, which is kind of all I'm after here. Again, I always talk about the, the hand purgatory that can occur if you're trying to do drawing demos or just draw at all and then you start sort of looking at the hand and going like, oh, that's not very good. Problem is it's a little bit too big, but I'm just going to cheat because we're on a timer. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Again, I'm making those judgments by looking above. <clears throat> and, you know, they're, they're kind of, this is, these are kind of, you know, this is kind of a chunky hand. Um, but that's kind of okay because I want it to look like an actual kind of warrior, right? Not sort of, again, no nail polish, let's say. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Again, we could we could give her sort of like you know if if we wanted to sort of feminize the hands a little bit more, we could maybe make the the nails longer like that. Um, again, these are all just basic iconographic things. They're not necessarily politically correct or sort of, um, you know, um, not necessarily true, they just sort of tend to sort of work. Can I drop this first? silent sorry trying to get this done and focus again it's a good sign that again it's like just this is just below the threshold of talking I don't want it to be too and let's see if we can push that in yeah, don't want it to be too tricky, don't want it to be too easy. I feel like we always want the that sort of inking finished line process to be a nice mix of things. Still some work to do, but you know, got a pretty good idea how to do it. There we go. So I can probably put this on the same layer as the as the character, right? And so again, um, here we're gonna have sort of stomach muscles kind of wrapping around, going here. Hard to know whether, again, those are going to be come in handy or not. Um, but again, those. Oh, Photoshop keeps doing that, keeps swapping. So we got that and that, but that is going to be different to the line that we get there from the, right, this one, from the leg. Got to separate out those. A few 
few shadows. There we go. I think that'll do. Again, that anatomy is not. I'm not going to win any awards for that leg, but. Again, every drawing is its own little sort of challenge, right? It's like, what can we get away with? How much do I have to do? Do I need reference? What do I, you know, what do I, what do I need there? Let's see if adding a bit more quad there helps. there and let's give this more um, and let's get rid of that whole thing try that again have to do. Mm, I feel like we need less anatomy here. Just because it's not a lot of that sort of same stuff anywhere else. here. Maybe that can sort of go into shadow. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just try again sort of try and make sure that we hide it. I feel like it's mostly just that it's kind of too alright we're seeing too much of it. Got to be kind of further back. Something to do with the perspective there that's kind of bugging me. Alright, so now we just got to draw a bunch of rocks and stuff. Just 
getting some of these outlines done. What I might try and do is put, again, let's see if we can have one, one layer here. In front, I do feel like just yet yeah, one little, whoop, there we go. Yeah, maybe like one. this on a layer in the foreground that will give us some good sort of simple separation I can put some atmosphere or make at least very easily make this kind of darker perspective and structure. It was kind of just a shape before. I think now it's a bit more solid. Alright, one. And yeah, I just think this, this sort of like whatever this silly shape is here. Okay, give it a few silhouette pops. Finish off the character first. I think that'll be important. Now, here, if we've got a situation where I'm drawing hair right behind the character, it can be a good thing. Just make a new sort of layer. That way, if I go over anything. Just erase it quite easily.
see if we can add in this thing. figure out where these things start and stop. I think having that, yeah, keep keeping that a little bit away from the hand is a good idea. Again, where, like where exactly all these strands will end, I'm not sure we can. All right, we can go in there, you know, refine that a bit. I don't want to do too much of that because it will sort of ruin the fluidity of those strokes a bit. But again, we can do a bit of that stuff. Or, a thing you can do with this is just kind of not really care. Alright, and probably it won't. It won't matter that much, right? Like, again, whether this sort of ends. Hard to tell. Again, what's happening here with this hair? Uh, again, I feel like this can be a little bit more vague. I think I'll look look at the differences between like again how you might handle the the coloring underneath those two two line styles. Probably also keep fiddling with the hair once um once we've gotten rid of this right, then we'll get a real feel for what it's going to look like all right so what do we got here what i can do is maybe indicate in a bit of the grip of this spear thing little bit more vague again so often less is more same sort of thing here This whole thing probably would have been way better if I just like did some silly single line thing and didn't fuss over this. You know, just sort of stop trying to make it feel structural. This makes it feel a little bit less um, sort of cartoony, right? This more sort of suggestive. Um, 
way of kind of rendering the, the inlay or decoration or whatever you want to sort of call it. So that's basically her. Yeah. So so you see, if if any if any if I if I want to be like super clean, I can go here and easily erase these. Right, easily erase those. Normally, I don't really care about that stuff too much, but yeah, you certainly can go in there and you know if you've accidentally through trying to get that smooth line accidentally drawn through something, you can. I'm just gonna merge it down. All right, so let's um, make a new layer. So this will be character foreground. This will be background. So not not a lot of layers here. Let's draw these guys. So again, these are really just going to be sort of. Funny shapes. thing smaller select See if we can add that little ball at the end. Alright. No idea how those will look. Just a just an idea. Again. So she is gonna be with these rocks. These characters are going to be in the background with these ones. And again, using slightly different um, drawing sort of style and technique for them to sort of separate them out um, just in terms of scale. 
and also because this is a bit quicker so just sort of like it's almost like sort of making the line and then sort of shaking the the stylus a bit so I'm trying to sort of add some variety and sort of yeah jitter to the stroke now this one again is kind of in the foreground more um, so it could kind of be on it could kind of be on this layer I'm just going to sort of draw it again as a little bit part of that sort of background we'll see how that works that that might look a bit funny but Just this silhouette a bit. I'm not sure again whether that's a good idea, but can play around with adding a bit more shape variation. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. So now we get it. Now let's get rid of that and see if we can actually no let's keep that in because I've got to work this character layer here all these rocks a bit more can we can play make another layer um, it, 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 using layers in Photoshop is so useful for experimenting with line quality right if you're ever sitting there thinking like what's my style how much black should I put in how much whatever should I put in you know you, you can easily do that with a um, traditionally with a light table and a bunch of bits of paper and experiment add more black see whether it makes it better or worse yeah, you don't know till you try you got to find those things so new layer you know add some more rendering add some more shading add more blacks see you know see what works and um you know you can even carry that through to the line phase you know and keep experimenting um you know you can keep different layers at the line phase uh, at the color phase sorry and um you know just turn them off right at the end if you realize look once i add color these things, uh, you know, these things that I thought were really important in the lines now aren't. So again, right? Like, is that better or worse? Better or worse? That's that's what I mean. So I'm I'm, I'm pulling detail a bit more towards right the the focal sort of area here. But again, I could, uh, you know, I could play around with, all right, adding like a bit, like really sort of loose shading here. I could sort of keep trying to make it sort of tight. Totally, totally depends what, you know, what that overall look I'm going for needs to be. Again, once you kind of find your range with those things, once you kind of figure out like, ah, oh, that's right, this is kind of how I draw rocks, this is how I draw trees, whatever. You can, um, you know, you can really go quickly with it. Doesn't mean you always should, right? But, but you know, once you sort of get into the flow, you know, if you've got like 20 pages or you know, some giant illustration that's full of rocks, you find it does go pretty quick. Now I feel like uh, again this um, this quadricep here. Let's merge that down. This quadricep just feels like a bit a bit harsh. That looks a bit better. All right. 
think it's pretty much color time, but let's get rid of that. And um, what I'm gonna do is, again, you could do this as well. New layer. I'm gonna play around with beefing up those lines a bit at the sort of periphery, right? The key line, I think you'd often call that. And yeah, just making sure that we get good silhouette read on these things. Um, ear, I want to come forward a little bit. All right, just seeing if I can, again, sort of push this, some of these things Push them back a bit. So again, just going through like making it feel a bit more like a drawing right like that's the best way to sort of explain it right just going through and you know removing stuff that feels like it was kind of traced shadows and bits and pieces. Let's see if we can again push the face in the same way. All right, just adjusting depth, tweaking depth. Now, again, we could try putting in sort of shadow or something. Um, that's often the sort of thing that, you know, stylistically, yeah, I, I would really sort of play around with doing that on a separate layer. I'll show you how that separate layer thing works. Maybe that might be a good idea. All right, running out of time again. I, I could sort of put try put more anatomy into these legs, but uh, again, my leg anatomy is not, it's not great, to be honest. I, I, I often see these things and I, I feel like sometimes people, depending on what your drawing skill is and what, what mistakes you can kind of see, but again, the, 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 the anatomy skills that I have are quite sort of specific. I'm, I'm quite good at, you know, not drawing stuff like with the leg and, you know, making it kind of work sometimes, but you know, my, my full analytical um, anatomical, you know, sort of life drawing skills and stuff like that, and are not, you know, are not sort of super high level. So, you know, I, I kind of have the basic primary and secondary forms kind of sorted, but w when it comes to kind of those tertiary forms, like the real subtleties of how, um, you know, a lot of those sort of muscles look from, you know, different angles that I'm not normally drawing. Yeah, I'm, you know, that stuff I'm still working on. Um, all right, let's try and plus this little hand just in terms of popping the silhouette a bit. All right, there we go. That's enough. 
All right, let's um, let's jump into the color. All right, let's uh, let's add some color here. Just gonna group these, get rid of these. These are the only lines we've got. Um, and again, I'll sort of play around with adding these in. Right, we'll see what effect and difference they have. But let's separate out. These different elements first. Let's go with these foreground elements. Again, just using some actions and a few other things to speed up this process. I've got those and to pencil mode, just do super simple round. Let's select out that. Um, yeah, so again, here's where we can just sort of decide where these sort of empty lines here start and finish. Just basically using magic wand, paint bucket, a few other things to kind of massage this uh, quick mask selection. Again, other ways you could, uh, you know, get in these flat colors that I'm putting in now. It's just painted in, right? That would be perfectly, perfectly acceptable. Probably one of the easier ways to go. Just gonna fill that in. Let's select that out. Get whether that was meant to be open or closed. There we go, and close that there, close that there. And again, let's use some. I'm going to do it on the character and then. What I'm going to do is add those later, so it'd be a bit weird for a second. Got those lines. Now we got these as lines. Just going to hide those. There we go. Got those. Match those, put those down. So now we can see I've got them. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Is that going to help us? We'll see. We will see. Here's the background. Q for quick mask, and then let's just close. You, now you can turn on the characters to at the same time to kind of help you figure out how to do this. All these kind of um, Again, the easiest way to do this and the way I sort of explain to do a lot of it in the um, quick start tutorial is, is kind of just to do it by hand. But there are, I mean, it's good to know and, and something I sort of talk about a lot in my Line and Color Academy sort of larger course is, you know, specifically how we can make these things more efficient, right? Like how do we, um, how do we make you know what? What is a fairly laborious process in many in many ways, 
in cases, how, how do we optimize those? And, and the good news is with Photoshop, again, there's a lot of ways to make these ideas a lot um, quicker and easier so that you can sort of, you know, have, you know, processes and, and sort of techniques where we sort of skip a lot of that sort of boring stuff, really. All right, what are we doing with these colors? Let's turn on the foreground. I'm gonna make the foreground a bit darker. I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. Now there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to sort of color this, right? I, I don't I don't have any sort of real like solid plan with this kind of thing. But it uh, can be a good idea to figure out some sort of value plan, right? So that at least, you know, I kind of have an idea how I'm gonna handle the, you know, the overall look. And the fundamental thing to figure out first is, is the character light on a dark background or dark on a light background. I'm going to go for a fairly simple, um, you know, silhouetted character on a lighter background, but whatever you want to do. Um, doing this is, is the equivalent of sort of a grayscale thumbnail. This is often sort of the way I do it. Um, I, I'm designing a simple image, right? So we've got a simple image here. It's just a character, simple silhouette. I know the silhouette's strong. Is it gonna have a primary read? It's gonna be the character's face. The character's face is in the center of the page. There's not a lot that can go wrong, right? So it's, it's not a complicated composition. There's lots of ways to make it work. That's the best way of thinking about it. There's lots of options, lots of things I could do that would probably make it work. It's not like, uh, you know, there's five characters and I'm, I'm trying to tell a story at the same time and make sure we look at this character's face first, and this character's face second. I don't have to worry about word balloons. Again, it's a simple image. Character smack bang in the middle of the page, right? Um, what we want to look at is her face and we will look at her face because that's what people do. They look at faces. So, um, you know, with that said, again, I'll probably mess it up anyway, but um, there's lots of ways. I, I don't need to create a grayscale thumbnail because I've sort of done it before and I'm that's pretty, this is pretty much what I would do. But certainly, you know, you, you just to sort of illustrate that point, you could, you know, really make the background sort of darker right and then you could you know sort of make her right sort of lighter you know like you could try something like that and you could experiment at this phase um and i think that's a that's a perfectly sort of valid way of doing it right you'd be like what do you want right do you want this or this this or this what's closer to your idea what's closer to what you had in mind um, now, in terms of what color to choose, again, there's a there's a bunch of different ways to kind of think about that. But because I've got some sort of gray tonality here, one of the things I can do is actually just above everything else, I can play around with overall sort of color a bit and really think about well, you know, let's just let's just think about the the basics to begin with. Again, that's that's like a bit of a mix. Right. Again, I, I like I have a bit of an idea in my head, but I don't don't really know one hundred percent. So I'm thinking just like, again, the, the basic idea is I, I just like blue with her sort of skin tone being kind of like quite sort of tanned and, 
and, and sort of like um, warm and these things may be sort of warm as well um, so how do we make all that function well because again I've sort of got right I've got stuff everywhere so I made a selective color of the top well it, it's quite easy for us to just sort of like just copy that into those layer stacks right and then we can kind of just merge those in so again fairly fairly sort of tricksy photoshoppy stuff right at the moment um, again apologies if that's if it's a bit tricky to follow along exactly going to duplicate that because that makes it easier to add color um, and, and I'll, I'll show you what why in a sec I'm just going to use the sort of the, the brush pencil that I that I normally use and we'll just kind of um, separate her character a little bit from everything else so again I've got a duplicated version of the flats at the bottom and all that means is that again I can go back to that bottom one if I need but it's better than just sort of painting on top of that because now I can kind of use I can use the existing bounds to help me now I find using a slightly textured sort of rougher brush here is, is quite useful because it, it means that if we are a little bit sort of sketchy uh, it kind of covers up for some of those mistakes All right so I'm putting in flat colors but I'm doing it in right in quite a particular way again like sort of roughing it in with a brush um, again that kind of is a bit more if we zoom up it's got some texture in it now I'm always looking at the version of this that is on my sort of monitor above right so that we're always considering that figure that out now again because we're dealing I'm doing all this with just flat color we can um, easily change these so you know often I just sort of put any old thing in to begin with um, and in many cases what we want to put in is just something to allow us to see these these differences right sort of so I can sort of see where I'm sort of putting these different strokes so again in some cases we we don't want this um, yeah, we don't want too much of this brushiness, right? So in some cases it helps us, in some cases it sort of doesn't. A lot of it just depends on the contrast ratio, right? Am I painting something dark into something light? Um, you know, but certainly where you've got sort of similar types of values, right, can become very, very useful. So again, I'm just going to keep um, making these changes, right? Just block everything in, and then we'll see see whether it works, and adjust these colors a bit. Again, at the moment, I don't feel like it's really not really there yet. So 
we can kind of get a feel, again, like we can kind of get a feel for it. All right, like what's happening. Hide, let's go control U. See if we can adjust this. Yeah, so again, I feel like we don't want the hair to like steal the show. It's gonna keep it all a bit low key to begin with. Um, and, and the other thing to consider is that like when we are trying to think through the problem of like what color is this going to be what what is going on um, you know it, sometimes being rougher with it you know can be can be really useful right so it, it, it's, it's not just a matter of like, oh, I need to put all these things in here, um, you know, and, and, you know, make choices. It, it's often that sort of, it's an experimentation process for me anyway, when I'm doing this. If I'm teaching it, right, that there's theory and there's, you know, we would try and think our way through it. Uh, but this is just me doing it, how I, you know, how I actually do it. And in that case, um, yeah, I'm just kind of messing around and seeing what happens, and, and sometimes that sketchiness of the right of this sort of rougher brush helps me kind of just rough some things in and see how it goes, see how it looks, and you know the, the advantage there is if if it kind of if I've got a bit of rough texture or something, it doesn't matter, you know it 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 just adds a little bit of character to the work. It's not often the end of the world. Now, again, I feel like things that are working are that, again, I've kind of got way less contrast here between the hair and the character. And that, that makes them feel more natural, right? Like they're kind of, it's kind of one, which I guess is sort of, again, I, I'm not consciously sort of saying, and that's why it works. It's just that sometimes some of these things that I'm sort of doing tend to, sort of put it more in the direction of what would the vague idea that was in my head Again, paying attention to, you know, what I said before about, you know, the iconography of how many, how much of those whites of the eyes we tend to see. And again, I don't know whether I can worry about giving her a particular type of eye color or anything like that. Again, we can turn off right that stuff that I had and yeah it's, it's it's often really hard to tell is this is this making life better or not all right Right. 
Let's get a really faint color. Um, so we're just getting that skin to make it slightly, slightly pinker. That's kind of what I'm after. Some of those other ones are a bit, a bit sort of harsh. So I'm just getting the eyedropper, the, sorry, the paint bucket and just setting it super low opacity and just kind of hitting that. That's what's allowing me to modify. The, the colors that way, right? Sort of creep up here and there. Now again, this this is looking pretty sort of rough. Let's think about making that sort of eye a bit darker. Just trying different sort of colors in there. Again, it's probably not going to matter a huge amount. Just going with the, if in doubt, stick with something really sort of simple, right? I'm just going to make a lot of these sort of straps a bright, you know, just a sort of brown color, right? Just keep the color scheme super simple. We'll be color grading over the top of it for sure. So again, let's see if we can get a. this gray and the brown together for what's happening here. It's kind of a mowing cloth thing. Right. So again, I'm sort of just rushing around trying to put in some of these things to see like does this work? You know what I mean? Like, let's get, let's get rid of as much of the, you know, of stuff having no real defined color as possible. And then we'll kind of see if we can adjust it. Sometimes we'll get it right to begin with. Sometimes we will not. Again, obviously the, 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 the best way to do this is kind of, you know, you just kind of have a really strong vision and just punch in the colors to begin with. You might be copying something. Um, again, for me, because I'm playing around, I'm, I'm sort of doing the discovery process thing. Again, this is how I do it. It's not how I would sort of teach it. Uh, it's not how it's done, just how I do it. Not how one should do it. All right. to a certain degree. Let's see if we can push that down. Don't necessarily want anything to be super shiny or have like a really strong material not at the moment. It's trying to balance the overall sort of colors and stuff. I'm 
trying to separate her from everything else. All right, so these guys obviously Them to be a particular sort of color. Let's select those. Control H, Control U. That hides the selection. All right. So other things that need doing is that again. I'm going to go with it. Ooh. Adding a bit of texture. Go with a particular sort of look for these kind of rocks. Thinking about adding lighter colors uh, sort of at the top. And yeah, using that sort of natural texture of the brush to, to help me get some interesting stuff in there super quick. Do the same thing here. I'm doing this as a separate on a separate layer. Now yeah doing these kind of things again I might I probably need to tone this down. Yeah, doing these sort of things with this sort of rough brush is a lot easier. See if we push that down. Yeah, I'm not after heaps of contrast or anything. stuff maybe a bit um, a bit warmer So again, these colors aren't, they're not perfect yet. They're not right. Other thing I might sort of play around with is let's adjust that background color. So again, maybe we could bring up the value of it again. Don't think so. I think it's working as it is. It's just important to push the push those colors. Get them right. Think about doing some clouds quickly. First, I'll just quickly add this turn here. up a bit because probably again if I sort of do it now I probably won't have to fiddle with it again again it's often these little like these boring tasks that give me a bit of reprieve right so like uh, I think very early on in my 
sort of artistic adventures, I would be trying to kind of eliminate all of this stuff. Um, but I do find that, yeah, just kind of spending time doing really mundane tasks, like, again, coloring in rocks, kind of gives my brain, again, more so when I'm not recording a demo or something like that, because you really are just sitting there thinking about stuff. Um, yeah, good opportunity to think about the image, let your subconscious go a little bit, consider the things that are going right, wrong, etc., etc. So a lot of these things have value, even though they maybe don't fit the, the rapid, crazy pace of um, a modern sort of creation and entertainment, right? Kind of, it, it's it, when stuff's boring. If you're kind of occupied, you will find that your brain can work pretty well from a creative standpoint. Right? It's, uh, it's like processing. All right. So again, this looks kind of weird. I, I kind of I feel like. I think I want to kind of add again some animalistic two-tone to these guys. Again, super subtle. Just something. Maybe put something to the right to that sort of top. Anyway, super basic. Um, so I think what I would do is play around with a big airbrush and see if I can adjust some of these colors a bit. I was going to add clouds, that's right. Maybe I should do that first. Yeah, let's add some clouds. I think that is going to be important. So, got a new layer. Let's pick some cloud brushes. All right, I think it's often these kind of, uh, I think this is like a Jamie Jones. These are Jamie Jones's brushes here. So if, if anyone's like, what are these brushes? There's like a million brushes there. Um, again, a very, very talented guy called Jamie Jones a long time ago made his brushes sort of available. And um, I've just always sort of used his because, um, you know, it, it, I, I don't make a lot of brushes. I don't use a lot of brush variety. If ever I need to sort of, you know, do something like this, um, you know, I don't go and make my own brushes that often. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I really, really, really just stick to the, the most basic stuff when I'm doing sort of digital art in terms of brushes and stuff like that. It's just like what, what whatever's there, you know, I'm like, this is the... So it's the only cloud brush I know how to use um, because, you know, again, um, often I'm just sort of, I'm even drawing in the, the clouds, you know, so it's like I don't really need to paint them. Just thought for this one that might be something that's kind of cool. But again, I, I'm not really going to be going through and painting like, you know, a crazy amount of, you know, realistic clouds. It, it's just a texture, right? Um, but it would be good to kind of think about again maybe some like sort of overall like sort of gesture to it Again, I'll probably grade this down a lot, right? So I'm not, I'm not too fussed about it. I'm gonna not 
trying to get it perfect. But yeah, I, I just pick, you know, very, very basic brushes that um, I sort of know how to use. Once I kind of find something that sort of does the job, that's that's it, you know, you'll find. 10 years later, I'm still doing exactly the same thing. If that's like an effect I was trying to get and I find the brush, I kind of save it, use it again. Um, yeah, the, the, I've always been like the least amount of fussing with brushes, the better. So again, I, I'd give that sky like probably a two out of 10 in terms of, you know, being like a, you know, a good or bad digital art sky. It's pretty, pretty average. Um, again, less is more. So you can see there again, sort of pushing that back. And again, what we can do is, you know, just sort of reduce the opacity of that maybe if it's too, too much. We could also put those two layers in a group, right? Put a, uh, yeah, put them in a group, put a mask on that, right? You know, get rid of it in some places, fade it away, fade it down. Go back to big airbrush. Again, fading that back. You can play around with that later. sort of pushing that together. Now again, I do this with texture as well. I'm just sort of almost playing around with it um, with the airbrush to just sort of see like what is likely to work. basic idea is there I think it's just a matter of sort of adjusting yeah so let's yeah let's think about maybe adding a bit of texture Again, you know, like putting in those clouds, and now we're sort of. Oh, that's going over the top. There we go. That's a bit stronger. Right, and then kind of like getting rid of that as well. Right, so putting it in. It's, it's all a process, right? It, it's not a matter of like, oh, this is the sequence we need to be using, right? Like this is the, this is the best, you know, thing and 
this is this is what we always need to need to use. Um, it, it's like you try one thing, you try another thing, right? Again, like it's sort of is it is it um, science? No, not really, right? Uh, again, not when I'm doing this type of image. Pushing that, and again, that texture is pretty big, so we could make that a little bit smaller. Again, just giving it like a bit of stuff there. wanted to sort of keep the value arrangement right but kind of bring it up a little bit more we could sort of add you know turn that into sort of an overlay right so just bring it up more but sort of keep what we had all right um so again we sort of got this version of the character and again, we can always sort of adjust these things as we, all right, as we go, you know, like once you get to the end, it's very easy to kind of pull back. But again, my, my feeling is like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily liking the image heaps. I'm not sitting here going like, yeah, it's hundred percent working. Um, I'm kind of thinking like uh, it, it's sort of very flat doesn't have a lot of contrast um, we'll, we'll I'll hopefully be able to deal with that later we'll see let's add new layer let's clip that above these Okay, just put a bit of texture in there. All right, so let's, again, that's kind of the, right, that color we have there. What I want to play around with as well is adding some gradients to this character. All right, so we can, we can think about maybe, again, that doesn't need to be that strong right but again trying to think about some atmosphere there and maybe making them oh that's way too dark let's think about making a bit a bit sort of lighter or warmer up top so again that's sort of bringing it forward a bit And uh, again, one of the things I was sort of really wanting to play around with is, is again, sort of pushing the colors, right? Really trying to make it a bit more. Yeah, a bit more sort of graphic. So I'm, I'm looking at this monitor and another monitor. Again, it'll probably look very different on your monitor. 
but that idea of again there being like a strong sort of like the, the character being quite strong is something I was interested in all right let's see if we can let's see what Let's see if we can push that. things make them a bit lighter I feel like that on, on one of these monitors I'm dealing with this background is like way too kind of dark To that set of clouds I kind of created. I don't know whether making it, yeah, like subtler might work. making it a bit just playing around so again I feel like that's kind of interesting interesting things anyway the, the, the point is I feel like there's there's like enough gradient and there's enough sort of interest there I could try turning those lines off see if they yeah so you can see it, like in many ways I feel like some of that stuff isn't working so you can see I've got this set of lines that's doing that sort of tweaking and yeah like for instance this here, I don't think that's helping. Off. Don't need that. Don't need any of that. Again, that's all you do is just sort of play around with it in the in that way. All right, so I feel like I'm like there's something there, not not 100% convinced. Still, um, 
just because it's not it's not really working the way I kind of wanted. So again, trying some other things. Again, let's try and sort of make it, I'm going to sort of try and make it bluer. Right, and sort of get the blue right. I feel like that's closer to the kind of blue I want. Let's think about the black. See again, there's not, not actually that many blacks there. Let's see if we can bring these warm colors out a bit. So you can see even with like quite like the, the file's quite small, it's still Photoshop is really not happy. Yeah, so I think if you sort of look at that versus that, I kind of haven't really done a lot. Let's see if we can go select color range. All right, just bring out that. All right, let's try some more dramatic stuff. If we things a little bit more. So here's where, again, I feel like the, it's, um, again, the background is just a little bit, background is just a little bit dark. There's not good separation between the background and this. So if we sort of play around with levels, maybe. That's uh, so. What's happening is we, we've got good color contrast, um, not good value contrast. So this is one of these things where, if we go and say black and white, right? You can see we've got very low, con low, low sort of contrast. But again, we've got great read with the color, which again is why a lot of those rules, right? Like that it must work in black and white aren't always true. Uh, the only important thing is that we, we have sufficient color contrast. So again, I kind of like that. Uh, not good for people who are colorblind, but I don't know, what can you do? Yeah. Anyway, interesting. Um, let's play around with adding a bit of texture but in the same way we were before except this way I'm gonna sort of add a bit of all right let's still keep it sort of quite low opacity you see I'm gonna add some color variation color vibrance 
by painting some of these colors into each other. Because before they were kind of very similar, whereas now, right, they're not. I don't know whether that will help a lot or anything. But, um, often, you know, it might, might make it feel a little bit less sort of completely cartoony, right? Like adds a bit of color variation. Again, not too much. You don't want to sort of draw from that focal area, but that can often add a lot. And again, the other sort of simple trick I often like to use is the um, sort of dust particles or another sort of similar thing. So again, we've got a very sort of empty image in, in some of these areas. And that's where that um, clouds are meant to come in and sort of help a bit but they were not really doing that something interesting will kind of happen. It's kind of interesting. So it's kind of like inverting it. better we're going to get yeah and again like every time I add those clouds I'm like oh yeah I mean it's like simpler is going to be better right yeah so that's kind of with the
bit more of a gradient there. I feel like that maybe just makes it a little bit less flat. Alright, gotta stop playing around with it. This will take forever. Get, um, so think about, again, just playing around with... Alright, just, we can try and push some of that focus right to the center a little bit and then now that we've got a bit more of that color variation color vibrance in there again we can always keep playing with the colors a bit which is again something I'm always doing and um, probably again this sort of thing is like something that's we're best off doing when you kind of wake up in the morning right so wake up in the morning and have another go at it um, sometimes again it's kind of you know you can you kind of go through different interesting ideas and variations um, but yeah really at the end of the day it's kind of uh, it's easy to get blind to these things so again, it can be good to adjust some of these colors specifically sort of by themselves and that way we can, you know, potentially address just like minor sort of color um, annoyances. And again, a lot of this is because, you know, I, I sort of have an idea for, for what I kind of want things to look like, right? Turning on and off that color adjustment. keep messing around but yeah probably what I'll do is we'll, we'll leave it here quickly because um, again that that's pretty close to kind of what I had in mind um, and yeah you know tomorrow I'll have another look at it and I'll sort of do a, a final adjustment final grade but that's basically the idea Again, sort of blue and, and warm. It's not quite 100% sort of what I wanted. Um, you can see we've sort of got, again, some of that um, sort of heavy texture is maybe a bit much there. But yeah, that's kind of works. Let's put some grain and signature on it. There we go. Got them. colors there cool all right so again you can see that the grain kind of adds a little bit 
Um, yeah, th there's there's a lot of sort of adjustments and things you can kind of play with, right? You know, I, I feel like it could be that, you know, just adding a bit, like just doubling those lines might be really useful. Um, that might sort of add a lot of sort of contrast. You can see, bang, you know, maybe those lines are just a little bit sort of thin. Yeah, but anyway, I feel like that's pretty close to kind of what I had in mind. So we'll leave it there. Thanks for hanging out. Again, that, um, you know, last phase of sort of playing around is something where, again, you know, it can feel like that takes a long time. Certainly for me, sometimes I'm like, oh man, you know, that takes a long time fiddling around with an image. But a lot of what's happening is, um, you know, I'm sort of just building sort of library in my mind for sort of what works and what doesn't. And I'm sort of trying to manage the internal image that I kind of had to begin with that sort of, you know, based my, you know, that, that original thumbnail, right? So if we sort of go back to that sort of thumbnail there, there we go. Let's sort of look at the, the difference, resize that. Yeah, so again, similar similar kind of idea, probably again in that sort of three hour range for creating the image, which is normally sort of what I'm after. I like the color contrast there. Again, in my mind, there was some slight sort of differences in terms of like how the blues looked and how all that sort of stuff might sort of work. Um, and that's why, again, I kind of keep like fiddling around with it. But I, I can recommend doing that I do think that the best way to handle that is to kind of, you know, have a really good go at it and, um, you know, then maybe sort of just, you know, sleep on it, basically, you know, like put it away. Um, you know, you can also save a JPEG of it, put it on your phone or something, you know, and kind of like look at it in a, in a different context, um, different screen. And that, that'll often give you a really good idea of like, whoa, that's too dark. Whoa, that's too blue. Well, that's sort of really off. But again, that concept of the line and color being is, is that the color is really important. The subtlety is really important for, um, you know, anyone working in a line and color style because the colors kind of are everything. Um, they add a lot, especially when you've got a clean line style like this. Um, so, yeah, it can be worth spending that extra little bit of time, right? The extra sort of half an hour, like large percentage of your time doing the grading and thinking about how the image works. That often is the difference between it kind of working and not working from an illustrative point of view. You can obviously plan these things out to begin with a little bit more, um, create some color thumbnails and those sorts of things. But again, I when I'm working at this sort of speed, I... I try and sort of do that stuff at the end because again it can be very easy to just kind of you know leave it and say hey you know that's kind of working it's kind of fine let's forget about it whereas the more we sort of plan it in the beginning the more you kind of are often trying to get to a particular look right try and get to a particular sort of feel or something which again is kind of similar to what I was doing around chasing a particular feel um, and again at some point you have to sort of step back and say is it any good you know, like it, it, is, is it, you know, is it worth abandoning at this point, you know, and, and again, always remember, it's very easy to come back, as I said, the next day and kind of have another pass at it. Um, anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for hanging out and uh, listening to me sort of ramble about um, line quality and other various bits and pieces. Hopefully this has been useful. Again, if you um, want to check out the line and color quick start guide, go have a look in the description. Should be some basic information on sort of how to get, you know, um, a lot of the things that I'm doing here working in terms of line work and thumbnailing and thinking about your composition sort of early on, even though, again, sometimes I don't always do that because I'm, uh, you know, trying to make life hard for myself and, and therefore interesting for myself. Um, but again, that's that's what you'll find in there is, is what I recommend, um, you know, you do when you're sort of starting out. So go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you around. Happy drawing.